Huang Yanxiu, an ordinary farmer. When he was 21 years old, his peaceful life was disrupted by three encounters with extraterrestrial beings. In the first two instances, he was unknowingly taken away from his hometown by two extraterrestrial individuals and brought to a distant, unfamiliar cities over 1,000 kilometers away. The most astonishing of these encounters was the third one, during which he was carried by these two extraterrestrial beings and flew 10,000 kilometers across China over a span of nine days. These repeated and fantastical experiences turned Huang into a focal point of public attention. However, many years later, on a morning in the Huang's hometown, some people witnessed two ET flying in the sky with their own eyes. This incident provided tangible evidence that corroborated Huang's past experiences. This episode will explore the origins of the several supernatural events through a series of genuine evidence, including the timing of the incidents, testimonies from eyewitnesses, historical backgrounds, and research records following Huang's hypnosis. The aim is to provide viewers with insight into some of the hidden details of the aliens. Huang's first disappearance, awaking a thousand kilometers away. On the night of July 27, 1977, after 10 p.m., the weather was oppressively hot. In Dongbeizhou village of Jiudian Township, Faishang County, Handan City, Hebei Province, a villager named Huang Yanqiu had just gone to sleep, undressed for the night. However, he was abruptly awakened by a clamor. When he opened his eyes, he was stunned by the scene before him. He was lying on an unfamiliar street, wearing the clothes he had taken off before sleep. Towering buildings surrounded him, and neon lights flickered. Amidst his confusion, he noticed the city name Nanjing on a building across from him. Feeling frightened, he just wanted to return home. Lost and bewildered, tears welled up in his eyes. It was then that two individuals dressed in police uniforms appeared before him. They handed him a train ticket to Shanghai and informed him that there were shelters in Shanghai that could help him get home. About five hours later, he arrived in Shanghai. Following the instructions of the two officers he had encountered earlier, he located the station police office and was taken to the ninth shelter on Mengzi Road in Shanghai. Meanwhile, in Dongbeizhou village, Huang's family and fellow villagers were searching frantically for the missing Huang. A few days later, news of his disappearance reached Zainsai village, located one kilometer away. Zainsai village dispatched someone to deliver a telegram to Dongbeizhou village. According to the messenger, on the day after Huang's disappearance, which was the morning of July 28, Zainsai village received this urgent telegram from Shanghai. The content of the telegram was as follows, Zainsai, Huang Yanqiu, is being sheltered at the Mengzi Road Shelter in Shanghai. Please come forward to claim him. As they couldn't find any information about Huang within Zainsai village, the telegram remained in the village for several days. Therefore, Dong Beizhou village immediately pulled together more than 200 yuan and sent three individuals to Shanghai to pick up Huang. Among them was a female villager named Liu Shishang. Why was Liu Shishang chosen to go retrieve Huang? Because she had a brother, Liu Qingtang, who was an officer in a Shanghai military unit. One day in August 1977, Huang finally returned home. However, his experience this time left behind some mysteries that were difficult to comprehend. First of all, the time when the Shanghai shelter sent the telegram was only 10 hours after Huang disappeared. In 1977, there was no high-speed train in China, and there were no planes in the area. Dongbeizhou village is 1,140 kilometers away from Shanghai. At that time, if a villager wanted to visit Shanghai, he first had to go to Handan City, 45 kilometers away, and then took a train for 22 hours to reach Shanghai. So, who sent this telegram so early? Huang said he didn't know about the telegram when he was in Shanghai. If someone had asked him the address of his home at that time, he could not have given the wrong answer. 
According to his guess, it might have been a telegram from the two policemen who gave him the train ticket. Huang's second disappearance, guided by two mysterious individuals, freely entering a military camp. The events were far from over. On the evening of September 8, 1977, a village assembly was held. During the middle of the assembly, the village leader instructed Huang and other young people to return home early to rest, so as not to delay the early morning task of delivering fertilizer to the arable land. Yet, that same night, Huang disappeared once again. Even more astonishingly, after he vanished from home, a row of characters appeared on the southern wall of his house, Shandong Province, Gao Dengmen, Gao Yanjing, rest assured. To this day, the person who carved the words remains unknown. On September 11, after returning to his hometown once again, Huang recounted his second disappearance experience. On the night of September 8, after a tiring day, Huang fell asleep in his bed. However, he woke up in the middle of the night to find himself lying on the plaza of Shanghai North Railway Station, more than a thousand kilometers away. The plaza was sparsely populated. A bewildered Huang looked around, and the enormous clock on the plaza showed it was a little after one o'clock in the morning. He was filled with shock and fear. Suddenly, a heavy rain began to pour. Anxious, Huang started to cry. He suddenly remembered Liu Qingtang, a fellow military officer who sent someone to pick him up at the deportation station last time. Although they had only met briefly, Liu was the only familiar face in Shanghai. He knew Liu's home was in a military compound about 40 kilometers from the train station, but he had no idea how to get there. Excuse me, are you Huang Yanqiu from Feishang County? Are you going to the military camp? At that moment, two individuals in military uniforms approached him, claiming to be from the military and saying they were specially waiting for him at the orders of their superiors. They said they would take him to the military camp. Huang had no choice but to follow them. When he was to cross the Huangpu River, one of them gave him four cents and asked him to buy a ship ticket. However, throughout the entire journey, those two individuals didn't ride the same buses and ship with him. They simply appeared at each transfer point, guiding him along the way. After crossing the river, Huang switched to a bus and arrived at the outskirts of the military camp. At this time, the two men had already appeared at the gate of the military camp. At the entrance of the military camp, there were soldiers standing guard with rifles. As the three of them entered, the guard soldiers showed no reaction, as if they didn't see them. Guided by the two men, Huang arrived at the entrance of Liu Qingtang's home. Huang knocked on the door of Liu's house. At that moment, Liu Qingtang was still out attending a meeting and hadn't returned yet. His wife, Li Yu Ying, and his son, Liu Haisheng, received Huang instead. According to military discipline, when relatives and friends come to the camp to visit, they must show identification at the entrance, register in writing, and then we would come to the entrance to receive them before they can enter. If we don't come to the entrance to receive you, the guard soldiers at the gate won't let you in. How did you manage to get in? Li Yu Ying was quite surprised and couldn't help asking Huang about his direct arrival at their door. Huang replied, I just followed the two military personnel and came in directly. Li Yu Ying was very concerned and immediately informed the responsible personnel in the military. They approached the guard soldier to inquire about the situation, but both the guards at the gate and the communication office claimed they hadn't seen Huang and the others entered. Was Huang dropped from the sky then? With an unclear background and having entered the military camp without registration, Huang's actions stirred the entire camp. The military sent a telegram to Dong Beizhao village, inquiring about Huang's identity. Dong Beizhao village promptly replied to the telegram, stating that Huang is not a bad person. The next day, Liu Haisheng used a jeep to drive Huang to Shanghai railway station, where he purchased a return ticket for him. On September 11, Huang returned to his hometown. 
Huang's second disappearance once again sparked people's suspicions, and the stories about it became increasingly fantastical, taking on a legendary and mythical hue. Unable to bear the pressure of various rumors, his fiancée left him. Huang's third mysterious disappearance, being carried on the back of the two men and flying 10,000 kilometers, visiting nine major cities in nine days. Just on the ninth day after Huang's return home, which was September 20, he disappeared once again. This disappearance was the most extraordinary one, as he was in the company of the two individuals for nine days. On September 20, after dinner, Huang left his home for errands and returned after 10 o'clock at night. Just as he entered the courtyard, he suddenly felt dizzy and lightheaded, and he lost consciousness instantly. When he woke up, he found himself in a hotel room with the two police officers sitting by his bedside. At that moment, the two individuals said to him, We are both from Shandong. I'm Gao Dengmen, and he's Gao Yanjing. Don't be afraid. We brought you out this time to show you the scenery of several cities. They also told Huang that they were in Lanzhou City, which was 1,000 kilometers away from his hometown. They informed him that the polices he encountered in Nanjing and the soldiers who took him to the Shanghai military camp were them too. They had arranged his previous two disappearances as well. This time, they were taking him out to visit nine major cities over the course of nine days. On September 21, after Huang having dinner prepared by the two individuals, they three changed into yellow military uniforms. They went to the balcony of the room, where one of them carried Huang on their back, while the other positioned themselves beside them. Together, they soared into the sky in the direction of Beijing. Covering a distance of 1,200 kilometers, they arrived in just one hour. In Beijing, Huang experienced an extraordinary sequence of events. Without purchasing tickets, all three of them managed to enter a theater and watch a play, completely unnoticed by the ushers. Later, they flew to Tiananmen Square, where the two individuals provided Huang with a brief introduction to the surroundings. After approximately 10 minutes, Huang followed them away from the square and entered a nearby hotel. As China did not have national identity cards at the time, the two individuals used a provincial introduction letter to register for their stay at the hotel. On the evening of September 22, the three of them flew to Tianjin, and as usual, they arrived within an hour. Once again, right under the noses of the ticket inspectors, they entered a cinema without tickets and watched a movie. Their next destination was Harbin. In Harbin, after wandering around a department store, they proceeded to Chongchun in the evening. On September 24, they flew to Shenyang. On September 25, the three of them arrived in Fuzhou. On September 26, they reached Nanjing. On September 27, during China's Mid-Autumn Festival, they arrived in Shen. On the evening of September 27, they returned once again to Lanzhou. On the evening of September 28, after Huang fell asleep, he was brought back to his home under the jujube tree. In a hypnotized state, Huang revealed some details about his time with the two flying individuals. Huang mentioned that these two individuals were brothers and looked fairly similar to regular people. However, what left the deepest impression on him was that their eyes were much larger than those of ordinary individuals. Huang had asked them why they carried him while flying. They told him that they were just taking him out to see things, and Huang didn't need to know anything else. He was carried by the two individuals while flying. The person carrying him had a soft back and emitted body warmth. They were flying forward while lying face down, with their limbs not moving. He felt that the flying speed wasn't too fast. He didn't experience any discomfort and felt quite relaxed. They didn't fly very high, maintaining a distance of about 3 to 4 meters from objects on the ground. They generally didn't pause during the flight. Despite the varying distances between cities, they all took around an hour to reach. 
the two individuals understood the local dialects in various places. When registered the hotels, they always had the introduction letters ready. Upon arriving in a new location, one of them stayed with him while the other went to an unknown place to retrieve three sets of military uniforms for them to wear. When departing, they would take off the uniforms and send them back to the same mysterious location. During the day, Huang generally slept in the hotel, and at night, he was carried while flying for sightseeing. The amount of money they had was just enough. Later on, they no longer needed to spend money on food and lodging. Sometimes I felt very anxious, but I knew that running away wouldn't help. The two of them took turns watching over me. They even said, once we're done traveling, we'll let you go home. Huang recalled. Looking at the journey covered by Huang and his two companions, they traveled a distance of 10,000 kilometers, spanning across much of China. But since then, Huang had never disappeared again, and he had never seen those two mysterious figures again. At this point, many people might be wondering whether the two enigmatic figures accompanying Huang on his journey were extraterrestrial beings. Are there any other pieces of evidence to support Huang's experiences? Huang's disappearance case alarmed the local government and public security authorities. According to Huang's account, he would encounter two mysterious individuals who introduced themselves as Gao Dangmen and Gao Yanjin every time he was abducted. Who were they? How could they carry out aerial flights with someone on their backs and casually pass through sentries to enter military camps? Based on Huang's recollections, renowned forensic sketch experts in China have depicted portraits of the two individuals. Researchers conducted investigations based on this information, but ultimately, they couldn't locate Gao Dangmen and Gao Yanjing, nor could they find any evidence confirming the existence of these two individuals. As a result, the investigators shifted their focus towards the people Huang encountered after each disappearance. Perhaps they could provide evidence supporting Huang's extraordinary experiences. Verified information showed that on the second day of Huang's first disappearance, Zainzai Village did indeed receive a telegram from Shanghai. For Huang's second disappearance, a detailed investigation was conducted by the military, and a report was submitted to the Handan Municipal Committee. Relevant records have been archived. Regarding Huang's third disappearance, he provided the weather conditions of the nine major cities he passed through Thier journey. Upon comparing this information with data from the China National Meteorological Center, the details matched. Next, let's take another look at the investigation of the relevant witnesses. Huang Incident Witness 1, Liu Qingtang Liu Qingtang was formerly the logistics director of the military unit in Shanghai. He informed the investigators about two occasions in 1977 when Huang visited his home. He said, in mid-September 1977, my sister Liu Shishang and two other villagers from Dongbei Gao village, Hebei province, visited my house. She told me that they came here in order to pick up Huang from the Mongsi Road shelter. She asked for my assistance. I then arranged for Deputy Logistics Director Lu Junx to use a military vehicle to go to the Mongsi Road shelter and bring Huang to my home. I had a conversation with Huang and found him to be a simple and honest farmer. The next day, I had Deputy Minister Lu Junx escort Huang, my sister, and the villagers back to their hometown by train. Regarding Huang's second visit to his home, Liu Qingtang said, at that time, I was attending a meeting in Nanjing. It was my wife and son, Liu Haisheng, who received Huang. I find it very strange that Huang came to my house the second time. During his first visit, I had arranged for someone to pick him up and bring him to my house using a car. He wasn't aware of the specific address of my home. The journey from Shanghai North Railway Station to my military camp involves taking a bus and a boat and it takes about an hour and a half, with a quite complex route that's not easy to find. Without knowing my exact address, how did he know which bus to take and which boat to board? 
Neither the guards at the military base entrance nor the communication room saw him. How did he manage to enter? Huang incident eyewitness too, Liu Haisheng. Liu Haisheng is the son of Liu Qingtang. When questioned by investigators about the situation of Huang's second visit to his home, Liu recollected, I opened the door and saw Huang standing at the doorstep. There seemed to be a person in yellow military uniform behind him, but I didn't pay much attention at the time. That person didn't speak and might have left afterward. However, upon reflection, the military uniform that person wore was very strange, it didn't fit well, the hat was too big, and the clothes didn't look like they belonged to him. That person had large eyes. Based on the investigation, researchers concluded that the two mysterious figures Huang encountered were extraterrestrial beings. To gather more evidence and details, on December 14, 2002, researchers conducted a hypnosis session with Huang in Beijing. The participants in the hypnosis investigation included investigators Zhang Jingping and Ji Jianmen from the China UFO Association, along with Professor Wu, a renowned hypnosis expert from the Medical School of Peking University. During the three hypnosis sessions, Huang recounted his three encounters with extraterrestrial beings from 25 years ago. Apart from being more detailed, his descriptions were consistent with his previous accounts. However, unexpectedly, midway through the third hypnosis session, Huang was suddenly awakened from the hypnotic state by Gao Dengmen, the extraterrestrial being who had carried him during the flight 25 years ago. Upon hearing Gao Dengmen's voice again after 25 years, Huang was extremely excited. After being awakened, Huang relayed the conversation he had with Gao Dengmen to the investigators Zhang and Ji. Gao Dengmen's first words to the hypnotized Huang were, I am Gao Dengmen, you've come to Zhang's place now. Ask them not to question you anymore, you listen to me. Huang replied, it was Zhang who asked me to come here. Gao continued, the first and second segments of the hypnosis were relatively successful. Stop the third segment of the hypnosis here, there's no need to proceed further. Apart from what happened in Beijing, don't talk about things that happen later. Keep my words in your heart, don't speak them out. Huang asked, Zhang is right here in front of me. Can you make him see you? Can you provide some evidence about this matter to let the world know? Can you offer some evidence to prove to the world that it was you who carried me during the flight? Gao responded, let Zhang research and find evidence on his own. Huang inquired further, can you stay in touch with Zhang? He has a mobile phone, telephone, and email address. Gao said, cannot stay in touch. Huang asked, so how can we find you? Gao replied, I can find you, but you can't find me. Let Zhang gradually research it. Afterward, Huang was awakened by Gao, and the hypnosis was lifted. At this point, Huang's three mysterious disappearances in 1977 became known as the Huang Incident. Strictly speaking, the Huang Incident falls under the fifth type of contact, involving friendly interactions with extraterrestrial beings. Coincidentally, on the morning of February 17, 2008, in Huang's hometown of Faishang County, many people witnessed two extraterrestrial beings flying in the sky. According to eyewitness Zhang Wenshang, on the morning of February 17, 2008, around 7 o'clock, he was taking a walk outside. As he was walking forward, he suddenly noticed two figures flying in the sky from the southeast towards the northwest. He quickly followed them. During this time, Zhang met Wang Xiangzi. Wang Xiangzi also saw the flying figures. They confirmed with each other, the two figures flying above, they are humans, right? Wang Xiangzi nodded and said, no doubt, they're humans. It was at this moment that they met Gao Wamin. According to eyewitness Gao Wamin, at that moment, he saw two individuals floating and flying in the air. He was quite surprised and thought to himself, is technology so advanced now? Can people actually fly in the sky? So, 
he shouted loudly to the two figures in the sky, Hey, who are you guys? Are you flying something? The two individuals didn't respond. They continued flying away. Gao Wamin described that the two flying individuals were approximately 1.7 meters tall, looked like ordinary people, and were dressed in blue clothing. In the same area, another occurrence of two extraterrestrial beings flying had provided strong corroborating evidence to the Huang incident. Thank you for watching.